In 1876, America was going to hold very first World's Fair in the city of Philadelphia, which was 70 miles away from where Hershey lived. With news of 37 countries participating and attendance expected to be in the millions, Milton decided to open his first confectionery shop at the Philadelphia Spring Garden Street. There, Milton offered a wide variety of candies, ice creams, fruits, and nuts. And although there were many other candy shops around the corner, Milton's stand stood out. One of the things he did differently was to install an air chute to carry the candy's scent from his basement kitchen to the outside air. That way, people would catch the smell of his candies and be drawn into his shop. As his business began to flourish, Milton had to rent a bigger space for his shop. However, things took a drastic turn when the trade fair ended and the Long Depression started, leading his candy sales to plummet. Milton managed to stay afloat selling his candies at a wholesale price to several other shops. But then another problem would come his way. Sugar became too expensive, and Milton's shop was now struggling to make a profit. As his business continued to lose money, Milton had to borrow some loans from his uncles. And over the next five years, Hershey worked himself so hard that he eventually became ill and bedridden. One day, he got a letter from his uncles, telling him that they wouldn't be loaning him any more money. They advised him to close his store and salvage whatever he could. Hershey, who is now 24, had no other choice but to file for bankruptcy. He had not only lost his business, but also his family's faith in him. In 1881, Hershey's father heard about the silver rush in Leadville, Colorado, and wrote to his son to come join him. Milton figured he had nothing to lose, so he agreed to join him. As they got to Colorado, Hershey found out that all the silver they came for was long gone. So, he ignored his father and found work at a candy store in Denver. The store specialized in caramels, but instead of using paraffin, which was the common practice of the time, the store owner used fresh milk, vanilla, and sugar. The result was a sweet, smooth, and soft caramel with a longer shelf life. Hershey was so impressed with the process that he stayed and worked at the store for a year until he had practiced and memorized the process. Once he was ready to move on, he decided he was going to open a new shop in one of the most competitive cities in America, New York City. He went back to his uncles, hoping for another loan. But to his disappointment, they rejected him and wanted no part of his endeavors. However, his Aunt Maddie took a bet on Hershey and loaned him enough money to set up his new shop. Upon arriving in New York City, he wasted no time in finding a job and started working at the Hyler's Candies shop, who ran two successful stores in town. Once he learned about the local supplies and got a taste of the city, he opened his second shop in 1884 and set himself apart by offering his Denver-style caramels. His business proved to be successful, and New Yorkers were hooked on his caramels. As sales began to improve, he was later persuaded by his father to add cough drops into his shop. But his decision to start selling cough drops meant he was challenging an already established brand in the city, Smith Brothers Cough Drops, which were loved by New Yorkers, and they didn't take the challenge lightly. During the next couple of years, Milton's business slowly began to struggle, mainly due to the competition in the city, accumulating more debts until eventually filing for bankruptcy in 1886. Once again, Milton had failed. However, he didn't lose hope as he knew what he needed to do. This time, he would focus on one thing, caramels. Now, if you enjoy listening to these stories of building wealth, then you might like to hear about our video's sponsor, Public. Public is the investment platform that helps people be better investors. On Public, you can find thousands of stocks and ETFs, along with more than 30 cryptos such as Bitcoin, Cardano, Ethereum, and also newer coins like ApeCoin. What I love about Public is that they will soon be featuring even more assets, including blue chip NFTs, where you'd be able to buy in shares such as this original Banksy painting or this pair of game-worn sneakers from Michael Jordan. This is great because no other platform offers all these alternative assets in one place. And with the current state of the market, it's great to have a diversified, balanced portfolio. 
In addition to being an all-in-one platform, they also feature a thriving investing community where you get daily insights and ideas from millions of active investors on the app, including the top experts helping you make better decisions and build a smarter portfolio. And for a limited time only, when you sign up with my link and transfer an account from another brokerage, you will get up to $10,000 depending on the transfer amount. See additional terms and conditions of this offer by following the link in the description. Returning to Lancaster wasn't easy for Hershey. Still, he summoned the courage after a few weeks and went back to his uncle's and aunt for one more loan. He told them about his new caramel recipe and that he had a better chance of succeeding this time because he could source the ingredients at home. But his uncles were done with Hershey. They told him that he was no different from his father and that he had now become the black sheep of the family. With nowhere else to go, Milton turned to his former accountant, William Lebkicker, who loaned him enough money to get back on his feet and help start his business. Using the leftover supplies from his New York shop, he started to make caramels again and began selling them with a handbasket on the streets of Lancaster. Using fresh milk and all the new tricks he learned along the way, Milton was able to create the perfect caramel that customers loved. He later established the Lancaster Caramel Company, and as his sales began to grow, Milton reinvested all the money he earned into renting a pushcart and later a small place for production. Although Milton's Aunt Maddie had turned him down for another loan, she had a change of heart after seeing the little progress Milton had made and was able to loan Milton another $700 to buy equipment.